Since May of 2023, I've been working on a personal project that I've been meeting to do for the last 20 years. I've now been a photographer for two decades and never, ever have I made a photo book. So this year, I set a personal goal of mine to go out and capture content, fresh content, with the specific goal to put into a book. I wanna use photos that I went out and specifically made for this book. And in doing so, I've been learning a lot about the difference in taking photos versus making photos. It's a good way to start a morning. Get to the chopper, head it down the page. It's 7 a.m. and we are about to embark. Arizona has always been one of those places. Monument Valley, the red rocks, the sand, just greatness, the vastness, the massive epic landscape that is Arizona, Utah. It just offers so much. It doesn't get any better. That was literally the greatest. <laughs> that fascination probably started the first time I saw a picture from Peter Lick titled The Ghost. And it was one of those images that I wanted so badly to take. It was like another bucket shot, e even before the bucket shot was even a thing. And back then you could go into these slot canyons and there weren't crazy amounts of tourists. You could still bring tripods. There were private tours and you could set up a shot and spend probably hours in these places. Very much not the case today. You would never know. All of that is just below the ground. You know those rattlesnakes are out here. That's why it's called Rattlesnake Canyon. I'm trying to keep these cameras safe from dust and sand. It's easier said than done. What people also don't realize is there are multiple canyon systems. It's not just Antelope Canyon, you know, there's Rattlesnake Canyon, there's Owl Canyon that run through Page, Arizona. Dude, this is so sick. As long as I've been a photographer, I have wanted to shoot a slot canyon from day one, 2003. Little Pete, this tiny little camera. Finally doing it. Trying to shoot 35 mil and 120 mil all at the same time in a spot that you've wanted to go your whole life is very overwhelming. Oh my gosh. Wow. Vlog footage, digital photos, shooting 35 mil photos, 120 photos. Every camera works different. This is one of the cameras I brought with me, the Mamiya 7 II. It's a rangefinder, medium format camera, and it takes 120 film. A lot different than my Canon R5, which I'm trying to capture the content of using this camera, but also documenting the trip and getting some digital shots, all while still shooting on the M6 the entirety of the time. My friend Matt Barnes is one of my favorite photographers. One of the things that Matt said to me is, Pete, there's a difference between taking photos and making photos. 
He said, I don't really have an interest in taking photos. Everyone takes photos. Everyone can take photos. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but my interest is in making photos because they're less boring. I feel like I'm able to actually add the ingredients of a photo and make something and put it together, which makes it more unique. It's something that hasn't been done before, has never been done before, will probably never be done again the exact way that you did it versus taking a photo. But I knew in this trip, I wanted to make a photo as well. So we got to work ahead of time. After numerous amounts of calls, trying to find horses, different people to help us out, we met a man named Don. We spent the day learning about Don's culture of the Navajo people and the history of his family living on this land, including all of these beautiful sites he took us to and explained their meaning and how they came to be. The circle is the eye. You'll see the arch coming down to a point. That's the beak. I'm gonna show you what these are, how they're made. This whole area was nothing but sand like this, ocean water. As it began to recede, the wind took all the sand away. This is hundreds and hundreds of years. Then they put a foundation on there. And when you see these air bubbles, it's actually those little holes that turn to caves. The wind takes all the sand away. This is what you're looking at today. Is that hot? Oh, yeah. That looks hot you know, to like wear, you, dude. You watch all those Western movies of the guy with a war bonnet and riding on a horse like crazy? Yeah. I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they do it. I'm dying right now, dude. This is like full leather. These are antique. These photos are going to be amazing. We got a photo shoot going right now with our boy Don on a horse on the edge of a cliff in Monument Valley. Shooting film. The light is perfect. I'm just going to keep shooting, so... You just hold that. Can you look straight out? Also, the background is pretty easy on the eyes. So, Utah, Arizona. Like I mentioned, I've been shooting for 20 years. Digital gets a bit, maybe not, not even digital, it's not even the way to say it. it just, Photography itself just gets a bit monotonous after two decades. There's a formula that you can follow and it works. You've got a style and you're used to it and you're used to everything. So it's nice to throw a wrench into that mix. And that wrench, for me, that's film. Really needing to understand what feels like an entirely new craft in so many ways with so many facets to it, it really puts you on your toes. Uh, takes you out of the comfort zone and, and forces you to see the world through a new perspective. And that's what I felt would be so interesting to capture within a photography book. Not the typical Peter McKinnon that you see, a completely different Peter McKinnon. That's what I've really set out to do this year with this whole, with this whole thing, this whole film thing. And again, it's, it's not to say that I won't ever shoot digital again. There are digital photos within this video. It's definitely got a place in my life to stay. But what I've learned and how I've been inspired is something that I don't think I could have got any other way. There's something that connects you with nature. There's something that connects you to the landscapes you're standing in when you're out there loading a roll of film that you're going to shoot that you can't see after. There's something that just feels like true photography. 
and that feeling I plan on chasing for as long as I can. I feel every now and then as a creator, you get to just put a little bit extra into something and it, and it feels really good. And it feels good to be supported by a brand that has been supporting me for the entirety of my journey on YouTube. In fact, they were the very first company to support me on YouTube that enabled me to take that leap to become a full-time YouTuber. So to still be a partner today, that's something special. So thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And if you need a website, or a place to host photos like something I took on this trip, or you make a photo book yourself and you need a place to sell it, Squarespace is a place to do that. Being able to monetize your brand with e-commerce tools easily, fast, with an all-in-one platform that has great customer service and support, it's an absolute no-brainer and you can save 10% off your first purchase by clicking the link in my bio below. So Squarespace, thank you again personally for supporting my channel and my art. And thank you for sponsoring this video. We'll see you guys in the next one.